sodium chloride. You want to get fluid that or the tubing that says continuous solution, not secondary. All right, so you get all your supplies. What are you checking? Your assessing the patient. Your assessing the patient. So you're assessing patient. You check your doctor's order. You check the patient's um, name, date of birth. Uh, you check for allergies. So on your performance test, you're saying all this. Okay, I gather my supplies. Based on my order, I wash my hands, I go in, introduce myself, ask the patient their name, date of birth, everything is fine, so now you're ready to do everything. So with this, when you come up to the patient, you want to check your site. So what are you checking your site for? Let's say you have this on. What are you checking for first before you connect to them? You're checking for the infiltration and phlebitis. So even though the nurse just anchored that fully, or the fully, just anchored the IV site, let's say it took a matter of 30 minutes to go get everything because you had to go check on another patient, you still have to come back and check this site all over again, and you need to flush it. What's the purpose of a flush? Uh, to clean it so it doesn't build up. To check the patency. To check the patency. Because this will tell you if there is the occurrence of the phlebitis or infl um, infiltration. So with your flush, they so take normal saline. A lot of the hospitals have it already made up in a syringe. If not, you take a syringe, you take a vial, the sodium chloride, you pull out five milliliters, and you do your, your flush. So with this, then I will come over here. Why well, can't flush it? So we'll just pretend this is it over here. So this is that site. So you come over. Now this may be clamped, because a lot of times with the patient's um, blood flow, it can back up even into the extension um, tubing. And if that happens, you'll see this clamp. So you can unclamp it. And it's up to you if you want to wear gloves or not, because this is just a clean procedure. You get your flush um, ready. Now with the flush, what happens when you take the cap off? If you're trying to get the air out, it can shoot up. So you just kind of massage it. <laughs> so you just do the best you can. Okay, so you have your, you get the air out of your, your flush. You're going to clean this cannula for 30 seconds. Okay? You take it and you clean it. All right, let's say it's been 30 seconds. Then you take this and you connect. Make sure you're on clamp and then you're gonna flush. It should be an easy flush. What are you looking for as you're flushing? Patency. So if it's infiltrated, you should see a little bubble. A little if the patient says, out, that really hurts, that could be more than normal. They may say that it hurts a little bit because then sodium chloride is a little bit of sodium and it can cause some burning. But if they say, if they jump and know that hurts, then, that's, then that can be a sign of infiltration. So you wanna pay attention to how your patient responds and it should go in all the way. Now, if it's infiltrated, so I can't flush, what do you do? You see? Stop the site. You're gonna stop, stop the site. So this is where you can undo all this dressing, and you can actually get down to the hub and see what's going on, see what it looks like. And then you can get your primary nurse. It may be positional, so it may be that when they take all this off, and if they just move that cannula a little bit, then they can flush it. Or it could be so that there's a little bit of blood left on the tip of the cannula on the inside so they can't push past it. So you always want to do undo all this dressing before you just yank it out. Because if it's a patient that is hard, they're a hard patient to get an IV in, and they've gone everywhere else, you don't want to ruin that IV site. If it's um, someone who's 20 years old, you know, closer to a pediatric age, you don't want to hurt them more than what you need to. So you always want to look at everything and do the best you can before you actually pull it out. So what I do if I know I'm going to hang fluid, I leave my flush on the end because it keeps this clean for me. All right, so I get my fluid. All right, so you've checked the order and everything, so now you're just going to get it out the bag. And I'm actually going to come here on the pole. All right, so you're going to hang it on your pole. And it's at least 36 inches above. Which one do you pull? What, what port do you pull? The one that has on the little T-bone thing. Yeah, no. Nope. So this one is for adding medication. Okay, yeah. So you're going to pull this. You're going to spike this port. 
This is for adding medication. So if you're in surgery and you see anesthesia or a doctor, use a syringe and needle and actually push up into that and push medication or adding medication. As nurses on the floor, we don't do that. Everything comes pre mixed from pharmacy. So you're always going to pull this one. So you take this and pull it. Now, do you touch the end of that? No. Right. You cannot touch that because you're going to introduce germs into the fluid. Each of these bags should have a little perforation on the side to help you tear it open. And I think I might have made it. There we go. <laughs> so you have your infusion set. So you take it out, take it out of all the wrapping, untangle it. You move this chamber, this clamp, as far up to the top as you can. And then you clamp it down. Because when you spike this, fluid is going to start infusing through. But what will happen is you're going to get a whole lot of bubbles too. So you want to prevent that all together by just clamping it to begin with. Then you're going to take this off. Do you touch that? No. Right. So you're not touching this, not touching that, and then you're going to push in and you're just going to twist and turn. All right. Then you're going to squeeze this chamber. You're going to get enough fluid till it gets to that line. Now, you have this end here. You take this off. Do you toss this in the trash while it, while it flushes through? No. Do you just do that? Oh, no. No. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> You'll be surprised at what you see. A lot of people do that. Yeah, they'll just put it in the trash and then let it flush through. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> you hold the end of it, and then you slowly open... And you slowly open so that you only get fluid. You don't want to get air bubbles mixed in with this. Because if you just wide open, you're getting air and everything else. So you just want to go slowly. See, I've got an air bubble. So you want to go slowly enough. If you see air bubbles, you can tap them up. And then you keep letting it flow into the trash until you, all the bubbles are out of the tubing. Still more bubbles. Can you breathe your legs? Hmm? Can you breathe your legs in the car? All right. And then you look at your line for any bubbles. Sometimes you may see little tiny ones. That's fine. It's the big ones you do not want in. So this one I could go, I could find through a little bit more to try to get it out. But as you can see, I'm holding on to this end. I'm not letting it go. Then you take this in, and it connects to this. So that's why I keep my flush on. Now, if you don't keep the flush on, that's fine, but you're going to have to clean with alcohol. So now you can't connect. All right, so then you connect. And if it's tubing for a pump, you put it into the pump, program it. Now, with your main IV line, you also can... To, um, label the bag. And this is just a quick look so that if it's going in by gravity at the beginning of your shift, you can um, swipe on here where it's at and you can keep a tally of how much fluid has gone in. So the 100 line goes by 100. And then it should align with 900. So then when this bag is completely infused, they have gotten a liter of it. That's how you mark it. So then all you do is throughout your shift, you come in one hour, okay, they're at, or you come on for that hour, and they were at 250. Okay, you come on the next hour, hopefully it should be down to the um, 450. Okay, so you just keep, keep your little hash mark. And that's just a quick way to see how the IV bag has um, progressed throughout your shift. Now, let's see, I'm trying to think anything else for the IV line. All right, so now let's say the doctor says, okay, so you have your normal saline hanging. It's going at the 125 an hour. You've got it infusing. The doctor says, okay, we're not going to give you antibiotics. Let's give you uh, uh, Zosip. We're going to do IV piggyback. Where does this IV piggyback go on this tubing? Right, it goes into that port. So what do you need? 
Secondary tubing. Alcohol wipes. What else? Secondary tubing and the medication. All right, so secondary. Are these all the secondaries you have left? No. Oh, okay. I'm keeping them. Okay. All right, so we have this, and you want to make sure your tubing says secondary IV. And this is secondary tubing. We're going to pretend that it has Kestol mixed in. All right, so with your secondary IV. I always tell students, hold it upside down. You don't want to put it on the pole, because if you put it on the pole and then try to spike it, it's going to leak out on you. So, and because this bag is so much smaller, this is 100, and, uh, 100 milliliters. But if you have a 50 milliliter bag and it's leaking out on you, you're actually wasting the medication. So, tell the student, all right, you open up the packaging. I have my secondary tubing. And this clamp is so that you can lower that. All right. But we're gonna, I'm going to wait to lower it because the chair is pressed. Okay. So now with the secondary, the secondary tubing is very short. It's very important that you clamp it first. If you don't clamp it and then you spike it, it's going to pour out so fast. I did that in nursing school and wasted a bag of 50 milliliters and then we had to call for another bag. <laughs> so make sure you clamp because I had it hanging on the wall and I'm trying to do this and you're a student and you're nervous and you can't get it in. So I wasted the whole bag. <laughs> so I tell students, turn it upside down <laughs> so you don't go through that. But don't squeeze too tight. <laughs> okay, so which one, which one do you spike through? Capri Yeah, it's like a Capri Sun. <laughs> oh, if you look very that. closely, it says add, and then it says set. set. Oh, set. Yeah, so add is to add medication. <laughs> set is for this actual set. So the IV piggybacks can look like this. It can look like a small bag with these ports. So you always want to pull the other one. You don't ever try to pull this. Okay. So you're going to open the one that says set. And then you're not going to touch that again. Then you're going to take this off. And then you're going to go in. You're going to twist and turn. And this is where you don't squeeze. Because if you've popped the seal and then you start squeezing on this, it's still going to squirt out on you. So you hold it towards the end, and then you just push in and turn. And you get it down to that line. Okay, now we're going to do So now you can, you can prime this tubing two different ways. So it has to go in to this port here. So what you could do is go ahead and clean this port. 30 seconds here, you're cleaning. All right, then you're gonna take the cap off of here. And you're keeping everything clean. All right, you're gonna take this off the pole. You're gonna unclamp, hold it upside down. This is gonna pull it for you. It's getting all the air out for you. And this is why you must know, is it compatible? Because if these two are compatible, then you can do that. If it's not compatible, then you can't connect to this. You're primed and ready to go. Okay. The other way would be to hang it on the pole. And let's say there wasn't any fluid in here. Then this is disconnected. Then you would squeeze your chamber as normal. And then you would open this up slowly and let